I start my painting process with a quick sketch to establish the main elements, keeping it clean and simple without much attention to detail. I'm working from a photograph I took earlier in the day of Swedehenge in Swede Hollow Park. After the sketch, I go over the whole surface with a wash of color. This makes it so I have a colored surface to work off of as I start painting opaquely, and so that I don't have to worry about white paper showing through anywhere. Most of this will be painted over, except for the sky, where I enjoy the more watercolor looking wash for the clouds. The next thing I do in a painting is lay down the larger shapes and forms, not worrying about detail yet. I use less water in the paint at this stage, making the wash much more opaque and covering up my initial sketch. My goal here is to build the structure of the painting and establish general values. As I said previously, I'm using gouache for this painting. Gouache is a water-based media that is made from pigment, water, and a binding agent, often gum arabic. While it functions in many ways similarly to watercolor paint in that it reactivates with water, it is designed to be used in an opaque fashion but with a very matte finish. The trick, however, is that since it reactivates with water, that painting on top of areas can be difficult. To get layering without the colors mixing together, you need to use less and less water to avoid the reactivation of the paint underneath. You may also notice that as the paint dries, the color can change dramatically. For the dark colors, they dry much lighter, and the light colors will dry darker. With all of these elements to take into consideration, this can make painting with gouache somewhat difficult to get used to. Once I've established the main structure, I start working into smaller and smaller shapes to get more specific with forms and establish light and shadow. As these elements start to solidify and the painting feels like how I want it to look, I then go in and add details such as, in this case, dandelions, leaves, and grass. This part of the painting process is always fun for me as the hard work is done and you're now just adding some nice decoration on top. At this stage, I'm using as little water as possible with the paint while still being able to get it to apply smoothly so that my details will not mix with the rest of the layers underneath and the colors will be as pure as possible and so I can add my darkest and lightest values. Once the painting's final touches are complete, the last step of the painting process is to remove the tape and reveal the clean edges of the surface. And there you go, the painting is complete.